Here's the thing. Some of us like to work in a very clean, controlled, pristine environment, and some of us prefer to work in absolute chaos. Whatever it is, it's your decision. And when it comes to the applications that you use, especially for creative work, it is that much more empowering when you can dictate how you work. How do you get stuff done? One of the best features of Capture One Pro is being able to customize your workspace at a very granular level so that you can work the way that you want to work and not work the way that some developer somewhere decided you should work. This video, I'm not only gonna show you the default workspace and how you can customize it, but I'm also gonna share with you my new workspace and how I'm getting my work done a lot faster thanks to this setup. So here we are in Capture One Pro and it looks largely the same as it did previously. In 15.3, however, you now have new icons that better match the iPad app and allow people to get around easier if it is their first time. So when you look at this, you have the default viewer that allows you to see your actual photograph that you have selected. You have the browser window off to your right side and you have your tool tabs to the left as well as a toolbar to the top. And you can customize this to your liking. Under the view menu, there are other options and you can see the shortcuts for those. So if you want to see the before and after of your image, well, that's just hitting Y on the keyboard and a little slider will pop up. If you hit Command G, it'll bring up a guide in case you want to crop with better accuracy or just get a viewpoint of what your image looks like and how it's landing. Now, I will say it is worth it to go through the view menu and check out a few options to see how you can customize the viewing experience for your liking. But this video, it is more about the workspace, so we're gonna focus on that. And the reason I'm focusing on that is, well, people will download Capture One and sometimes they might feel intimidated, sometimes they might feel like, am I doing this the right way? Is this the way that I should be editing my photos? Well. That really comes back to your style. And the beauty here is you can customize it to how you want to edit. Again, you don't have to conform to the software. The software will conform to you. With that said, let's take a look at the first thing that I customized, and that is the toolbar at the top. So if you right click and hit customize toolbar, you'll have this option pop up. And this will allow you to bring in tools, remove tools, and even bring in spacers to better align them. I'll often bring the auto adjust over here. This is a great tool just to quickly see what the software thinks an image should look like. I'll also bring the reset closer to the middle so it's easier to reach. There looks to be this invisible tool here. Well, that's actually your activity indicator here, which will tell you if the application is processing some file or if it's updating previews or in general, something that's happening in the background. And I'll leave that indicator to the left side as well. One of the tools that I'll use very often, you know this if you've watched many of my tutorials already, is the focus mask. So I'll bring that over here along with the exposure warning. And those are sort of indicators for me in terms of how an image looks before I'm gonna start editing it. Now, I won't walk you through the entire process just yet, but what you should take away here is that if you right click on the toolbar, you can edit it to your liking and use spacers even to make it feel a little bit more comfortable for your editing experience. Now, let's look over to the left side and you'll see the tool tabs. They have icons now with them labeled. So if it is your first time, it is a bit more of a comfortable viewing experience. For me though, I like to just have the icons only a little bit more compact and just give me a little bit more vertical real estate space. So we have the library tool tab here. We have the tether tool tab. So if you have a camera plugged in and you're gonna be photographing and you wanna see that happening live, there's a tool tab for that. And Capture One will have some default tool tabs here for managing your styles, your base characteristics, your crop and how you're going to align a photograph as well as your key editing tools. And lastly, a refined tool tab here, which will give you access to sharpening, noise reduction and film grain. So this is what the default workspace looks like. When you get Capture One, there are additional workspaces included. So if we go to the simplified view, this will just make things a little bit easier, especially if it's your first time. So all you have now is a library tool tab, your styles and presets, and your key edits. And this will largely give you most of what you need to get the job done. 
What I will say here though, it is worth adding two more tool tabs if you need them. The tether tool tab, if you are gonna be tethering with this application, as well as the export tool tab. I think this tool tab is a must for anyone getting started with Capture One Pro. It allows you to see how you're exporting your images, obviously, but it allows you to get a little bit more familiar with your export settings and a little bit more control around this. And having better fluency around how you're exporting your images, that's gonna make you a better editor overall. So right away, our tool tabs are pretty accessible, right? We can go in, view our images, we can view our styles, our edits, tether if we need to and export them and it's very easy to get done. But we're not done. We have more workspaces to look at. Capture One actually ships with a wedding workspace. So for those of you that are event photographers, wedding photographers, you have something here that will allow you to just edit in a way that is more conducive for wedding edits according to the people at Capture One Pro. I won't confirm or deny this because this is not how I would approach it. But that's the beautiful thing here is that there's no right way to do it. It really comes back to what speaks to you. So as you can see, there's a library tool tab, there's your styles, there's some basic edit adjustments over here, there's the crop functionality, this is going into color editing as well with your color editor and your color balance, and you have some fine tuning you can do with your spot removal, sharpening, and any purple fringing that might happen if you're shooting in bright environments, and then lastly, your layers and brushes and dynamic range. Now, say you're coming over from another popular photo editor. Well, Capture One has you covered there as well. If you go under workspace, there is a migration workspace. And welcome to the game show where the points absolutely do not matter. So two points for anyone that can guess what this workspace, what application it's supposed to mimic. So what you have here is your images on the bottom and your tools to the right. This might be something that you prefer. It depends on how you see yourself editing. For me, most of my professional editing actually started with Apple's image editing software called Aperture, which has long been defunct, but it was a great application while it lasted. And for me, that taught me to have the tools on the left side. So this is not my style, but again, if you're coming over from another application, this might be easier for you. Now, I'm gonna show you the real bread and butter, and that is my workspace, my custom workspace that I have built. This is my new custom workspace that I'm using to edit my images a lot faster than I used to. And you can download this in the description below. And there are instructions there to show you how you can actually install this so you can get up and running. So let's take a look at this. First, we'll start with the toolbar and I'll go to the customize just so you can see it. I have the reset, auto adjust and styles brought in as well as the activity indicator over to the left side here. And on the right, I have the focus mask, exposure warning, a little spacer in between, copy and apply adjustments before and after proofing, which will allow me to see what the image looks like for displays as well as printing, and two flexible spaces here to bring these tools closer to the center because I just don't wanna bring my mouse all the way to the corner. And especially if you have any hot corners or activations on that side, you don't wanna accidentally trigger those. So that's what I have for my toolbar. Now let's take a look at my tool tabs. I have a library tool tab, which will allow me to go through my images and albums and smart albums and just sift through the content to view them a lot easier. Now, under my first edit tab, I have library, histogram, layers, base characteristics, and annotations. These are all pinned to the top. They're in the non-scrollable area. You can remove them to the scrollable area, but I like to have them here because those are the things that I will often look at while I'm editing most often. In the scrollable area, you can have multiple tools and how you add and remove tools, well, you just right click in the scrollable area and go to add tool and you can choose what you want to add. I'll walk through what I have here. On my first one, I have crop, rotation and flip, keystone, exposure, high dynamic range, white balance, levels, clarity, noise reduction, sharpening, spot removal, film grain, vignetting, and the ones that are minimized here because I don't often use them, dehaze, purple fringing, moire, moir, 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 I know the right way to say it and I never say it the right way. Lens correction, keywords, metadata. So that's all there in the first edit tab for me. And while most of you are not here to watch me just list through everything, some of you do appreciate me walking through each and every one. 
So what is the goal of this first edit tab? It's to get the image to that Bob Ross happy place. It's taking the raw information and I'm gonna use the tools here to make them a bit more neutral. Well, I shouldn't say neutral. It's, it's just bringing it to a place that I'm a little bit more happy with, with respect to luminance and colors. I am not getting too creative here. Again, it's just to bring the image to a place that is much better than the raw state. My next tool tab is my styles tab. And over here, it just gives me quick access to the styles that I use and rely on. So some of them are presets that I go in to quickly adjust, and some of them are my custom styles. And if you wanna find out how you can get these styles for free, well, stay tuned to the end of the video. In here, it just gives me quick access to apply my creative look at a glance. I have this set up here because sometimes I'll go through these looks very quickly to see which direction I want to take an image in. The next tool tab is for me to get more creative with color and contrast. So I have two curve tool tabs here, and this is a trick I learned from David Grover, the instructors over at Capture One Pro, but this just allows me to quickly adjust Luma and RGB contrast at a glance and see them both live. And often I find myself doing an inverse S curve for Luma and an S curve for the RGB channels, and then going in and adjusting red, green, and blue as needed. Not all the time, but where needed. Just below them, I'll have the color editor as well as color balance. So the goal of this tool tab is just to focus on contrast and color in a creative way to bring them where I want them to be and ultimately give the image more character. Next, I'll have the camera tool tab, and this is pretty obvious. It will allow me to see my camera settings and even control some of my camera settings from the application. And lastly, I have my export tool tab to control my export recipes and give me all the information I need before I publish an image. Before we wrap up this video, my thanks to the sponsor of this video, who is conveniently Capture One Pro. Yes, the application that I'm using, they are indeed the sponsor of this video. If you're looking to get Capture One Pro, get your perpetual license, the link in the description, well, use that link and use my code and you can save 20% off of Capture One Pro. And to sweeten the deal, if you decide to purchase Capture One Pro using the link down below, let me know. Send me a picture of your receipt, just blank out the serial number, but send me a DM on Instagram or Twitter that you've bought Capture One Pro after watching this video, and I will send you my custom collection of Capture One Pro styles. These styles, well, I've spent years editing and putting them together and just building out a collection that allow me to edit faster. They're tuned for portrait, street, and travel, so there's a great variety here that will allow you to just edit faster and give you some creative options before you hit that export button. So once again, my thanks to Capture One Pro for sponsoring this video. You can save 20% off using the link in the description. And if you decide to do so, let me know so I can send you my styles pack. Like I mentioned earlier, being able to work the way you want to work and not having to conform to someone else's style or paradigm, um, it just allows you to be a little bit more liberated. And I think it allows you to work faster and more efficiently. And that's one of the main reasons I still rely on Capture One Pro. It allows me to work the way I wanna work. With this video, you've now learned the workspace feature. You've learned the workspaces that are included with Capture One Pro, how you can customize them, and I've given you the keys to my workspace and how I use this to my advantage. If you have any more questions regarding workspaces, let me know in the comments down below. But I hope you feel that this is something that more applications should do. I mean, it's great that Capture One has this, but let's not excuse other applications. I think the ability to customize how you edit, how you actually go through your images, this should be something that should be championed in more applications. But as far as I know, Capture One Pro is one of the few applications that allow you to do that and to do that with ease. Anyway, I've used up my time for this video. As always, my name's Gadgen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.